The Lord be with you. Welcome everybody who's joined us today, especially the visitors who are with us. We are glad uh, that you've joined us for worship uh, this morning. Our theme today is Faith Over Fear, the well-known account in the New Testament of Jesus walking on the water and Peter for a time walking on the water. Uh, so that'll be our focus this morning. Reminder, there is no uh, Sunday school this morning, but there will be adult Bible class that will be taking place. Uh, Sunday school will start up again next week and then our uh, fall um, rally day will take place the second, week, second Sunday in September. Reminder, there's t-shirt sign-ups in the back. If you haven't signed up, please do. They're free of charge. They're accepting donations for those. We're hoping to get, I think we got about 40 signed up for the church t-shirts. Uh, Pastor Severs wrote me and said, ah, I'm looking for 85. So I said, I'll mention that. 85 is what he's looking for. So uh, if you get a chance to sign up, please do so in the back. We'd like to uh, welcome our new uh, seminary uh, field worker for this year and hopefully the next, uh, Andrew Borseth. If you could just raise your hand there uh, so you can see him, look at him. You'll see him up here occasionally through the year. We do welcome him. I did send out a little biography of him in, the, in my email I sent out on Friday, but you'll receive more information. And so we do welcome you, Andrew. Uh, and God willing, your experience here will be a, will be a good one. I uh, did want to remind, also welcome this morning, uh, Sydney and Stephen Twillman, who will be joining the congregation, Sydney, through adult confirmation. And so we'll be having that little ceremony after uh, the sermon, so we'll welcome them. Car wash is taking place this afternoon. However, God's nature that he made may be washing your car as you come to the car wash, it looks like. So we're going to meet afterwards and discuss kind of how that's going to work. I will send out a note to the congregation as to whether that will be taking place or not. But I'm sure if it's raining as you go out the door, you'll realize maybe not this week. So I'll send out more information on that. Uh, we're going to meet as a group after the service to talk about um, what to do with the car wash and the youth event tonight. And then finally, wanted to mention that one of our dear members entered her eternal rest. Wanda Portell uh, did die yesterday, uh, entered her eternal rest. Her funeral service will be this Friday at 9 a.m., Visitation at Braun Funeral Home from 5 to 8, and then a half hour before the Sunday, or the Friday service, excuse me. Um, and there will be, uh, the tentative plan now is to have a meal after the committal service, which will be at uh, Jefferson Barracks Cemetery. Uh, then we'll have a meal here. So that's the, that's the plans right now. So please keep uh, Pam, Bob, and her family in your prayers. We open with our first hymn, God's Richest Blessings on Your Worship. Thank you. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The scriptures are clear. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of his holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. I sought the Lord and he answered me. Those who look to him are radiant. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia.
be with you. We pray together. Almighty and merciful God, preserve us from all harm and danger, that we, being ready in both body and soul, may cheerfully accomplish what you want done. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May be seated. Our first reading for this, the 11th Sunday after Pentecost, comes to us from Job chapter 38, 4 through 18. Of course, you know the book of Job. He is a just man, but experiences a lot of unjust suffering. This is God's answer at the end of the book. It may not seem satisfactory uh, to us, but what God does, it's God giving it, reminds uh, Job and us that he is the creator. Uh, he is the one who is all-powerful, uh, and he is his God. He made things, and Job didn't. That's his answer. The Lord said to Job, Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurement? Surely you know, or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk, or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy, or who shut in the sea with the doors when it burst forth out of the womb, when I made clouds its garment, and thick darkness its swaddling band, and prescribed limits for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shall you come, and no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stayed. Have you commanded the morning since your days began and caused the dawn to know its place, that it might take hold of the skirts of the earth and the wicked be shaken out of it? It is changed like clay under the seal, and its features stand out like a garment. From the wicked their light is withheld, and their uplifted arm is broken. Have you entered into the springs of the sea or walked in the recesses of the deep? Have the gates of death been revealed to you? Or have you seen the gates of deep darkness? Have you comprehended the expanse of the earth? Declare if you know this. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading comes to us from Romans 10, 5 through 17. Uh, here we're reminded, especially at the end, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. And another thing that we do as believers is that we have faith in the heart, but naturally we express it too. And we speak it with our mouth, and that's what we're doing here today, uh, believing it and expressing it in prayer and song. And that's described here in Romans 10. Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law, that the person who does the commandments shall live by them. But the righteous based on faith, righteousness based on faith says, Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how are they to call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us. So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. This is the word of the Lord. We rise. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. In 
And this will be the basis for this morning's sermon. Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. And when evening came, he was there alone. But the host by that time was, but, but the boat by this time was a long way away from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking in the sea, they were terrified and said, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water, and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. And Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And there in, in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. The children may come forward at this time for the children's message. And we gather right here in the front row on this side. Buddy, can you sit right next to Gracie there? Gracie, if you could move over just a bit. Yeah, right there. Why don't you sit down first and then maybe she'll join you? How about that? Okay, there you go. You can go right by next to her. <laughs> okay, well, good to see both of you. I want to ask you guys a question here as we start out here. How many of you are uh, afraid of things in the dark or when it gets dark? Have ever been afraid of the dark? Anybody here? Come on now. All right. Am I the only one? Are we the only ones out there? It's totally dark. Let, let me ask it this way. Let's say you have to walk. You forgot something in church. Maybe you left something up here. And it's about, it's all dark outside, dark inside. And your mom and dad say, I want you to go in by yourself into the church at night and find something. All right. You think that would be at all kind of scary a little bit? What do you think, Lennon? Now, why would that be? You're in a church. This is God's love. This is God's presence. Why would that be scary? Right. There's, there's like things that go on here. God speaks to us here and like, oh, this is me and this. I think a lot of people, when they're at night and they're going into church, it's a little bit, kind of seems uncomfortable here. All right. So I want you to think about this because the disciples experienced something similar. Let me get the right thing here. Okay, they looked out, and what did they think they were seeing? Can you see that right there? Do you see that picture up there? Well, we know who it is. Who did they think it was first? They thought it was a ghost, all right? You think they were afraid? Yeah, they thought it was something. What am I going to do with this? I can't control whatever that is out there, and I don't know. Seeing a ghost, that would be a scary thing. Okay, so they were really scared there when they first saw Jesus. Isn't that strange? They were scared when they first saw Jesus. Okay, what did Jesus say to them? Who can read that? Can you read that? Yeah, take heart, it is I, do not be. Who said that? Who said that? Jesus said that, right? And so when Jesus speaks his words, well, that's a good thing. It's not just seeing Jesus, it's hearing Jesus' words. All right, so Peter said, oh, that's pretty cool. That's, I like that. And he said, Jesus, let me come to you on the boat. And Peter walks to him, off the boat, to Jesus. Where is he looking? Can you see where he's looking? He's supposed to be looking at Jesus. What do you think he's looking at? And the waves. And he's saying, cool, really cool wind and waves. I kind of like it. You think he's saying that? Is he thinking that? He's not thinking that at all. He's saying, oh my, even Jesus can't help me with all of this. All right? It's like that, yeah. Okay? So what does he do? He starts sinking, 
And he cries out. You remember what he cried out and said? Remember? Yeah, he cried out, help me. Jesus, help me. He cried out. And what does Jesus do? Can you see what Jesus is doing there? Hold his arm. Not just hold his arm and say, come jump up to my arm. What does he do? He grabs him and reaches him up. All right? He rescues him. He does the same thing for us. Right? We're scared, nervous. He rescues him. And they got on the boat. This may look a little weird here to you. What is that? What's on that boat there? It's called Boat Church. They had some boat church. They got in the boat. And what did they do? They went swimming. They, they worshipped him. They sang songs and glorified him because, because of what he did. So it's kind of like we're, we've been rescued. Jesus speaks to us in our fears. We're not in a boat, but we're in church here. And what do we do in church? We worship, we pray, and we thank God for rescuing us because he knows he's done it for Jesus. All right? Do so anything that we're afraid of, is Jesus bigger and stronger than that? Yeah, and he's on your side. That's pretty cool. All right, let's pray. Please repeat after me. Dear Jesus, you walked on the water. You are the Son of God. Peter walked on the water and then sank, but you reached out to him, and you lifted him up. You do the same for us. Thank you for rescuing us on the cross and through the open tomb. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. And I've got a special one for you. This is for you. It's for your age. And this is for you, okay? You're welcome. And we sing the sermon here. mercy and peace be unto each of you in ever abundance from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who says in one way shape or form to you today fear not fear not two hunters came across a bear so they thought that wasn't a good thing they dropped their rifles and went for cover one ran to the right here and he went into the cave and another one ran up a tree not sure what you're supposed to do but when you encounter a bear you just do whatever you're gonna do all right so there they were and this bear was quite content uh, where he was at. I think he kind of liked this situation. So he sat right there in the middle of these two gentlemen here. One was, in the, one was in the cave, one was in the tree. 
And suddenly, about five minutes after this had happened, and their hearts were kind of starting, just beginning to slow down a bit, the one in the cave ran out, stood by the bear, looked, and ran back in. And the guy in the tree is wondering, what in the world is going on here? Lo and behold, three minutes later, the same thing happened. The guy that was in the cave ran out, stood next to the bear, and ran back in. And then, surprise of surprise, third time, the same thing happened. And so the guy in the tree yelled out and said, Woody, are you crazy? Stay in the cave until the bear leaves. And out of breath, Woody said, I can't. There's another bear in the cave. <laughs> Talk about being in a pickle, right? Rock in a hard place. Trouble has a way of piling up in life. It has a way of piling up in life, just as it did there, piling up problems. We sometimes think, well, if I have a, a problem, if we could schedule our issues, okay, Lord, we can deal with it. You know, put it on the calendar, we'll do this for two months. And then we'll give us a little break, and then the next one, and then the next one. But they tend to not work that way. They pile up. And boy, you sure see that in today's account of Jesus' disciples, and in particular Peter. Look at the problems that are piling up for them. The first one is the wind and the waves made their journey very, very uh, difficult, all right? Uh, they weren't getting to where they wanted to go. And then, to pile on that, they were looking at this apparition, uh, this apparition, this, uh, this strange spirit appeared there, and it terrified them. They weren't as terrified by the wind and the waves, but this absolutely terrified. We'll get to more of that in a bit. And then there are words of relief from Jesus, and Peter again takes his eyes off Jesus. The problem continues, and boy, those winds and the waves, they're really something here. They sure seem bigger than this Jesus and his words there. And then even after being rescued, he is called to account, or in a sense reprimanded, admonished for his minuscule faith. And yet, as these problems are piling up, at the end, there's worship and a confession that Jesus is the Son of God. In the middle, all kinds of troubles piling up, and yet even with that, Jesus in the middle of it all, there's always a reason to keep moving forward. Any sort of encouraging speech he sort of coach will say, you know, when the tough get uh, rough, you got to keep on going. This is kind of the proverbial statement they'll make in speeches like that. You hear this many times. Move forward. Never give up. Right? Well, what we have today is the reason why we can move forward when the troubles pile one on top of the other. We're getting closer to home. And Jesus is in the middle of it all. And what you have in our text today is this movement from being distant from God to in God's proximity, close to God. We're going to take that journey with the disciples here today where it also works that way with us. The feeding of the 20,000 had just taken place, you may say. I haven't heard of the feeding of the 20,000. Remember the 5,000 was just the men. Probably the women and children, there's up to 20,000. Quite a miraculous event that had taken place. They wanted to make him king by force, the bread king. This would be great. Jesus would have none of it, so he left. And he went by himself to pray, called his disciples to go across uh, the water here. He was by himself praying, and the disciples were struggling against the wind. And here's the first thing to notice here, is that Jesus notices their trouble, their struggle. It was night, and it uh, probably three to six in the morning. They may have been up to four miles out in the middle of the lake. There are no binoculars, lighthouses, night vision goggles, you no know, sort of direction type equipment. But here's the Son of Man walking toward them. 
The first great move to bridge the distance between God and humanity and the fear that happens even when confronted with the divine, and we're not divine, is made by Jesus. Made by God, made by the Holy Spirit. In another section, another Bible in the book of Mark, it says that he saw that they were making headway painfully. He recognized their issues before they recognized how big of the issue it was. And so to see that Jesus knows, very simply, Jesus knows. He sees there's distress. And this is the same Jesus that knows your needs. He knows your challenges. He knows your fears. Even before you cry out to him. How is this distance going to be bridged between us and God? It's by the Savior, by God, making the first move. And this is the way he works. Adam and Eve didn't go looking for God in the garden after he fell into sin. God searched for him. Paul wasn't searching for Jesus as he went off to Damascus. But Jesus sure found him as he was knocked off his horse and introduced in a very special way to the Son of Man. Jesus, the pursuer, the spirit, we will see in this text that they were making their way painfully. Jesus knows. But that's not enough to just simply know and to recognize. We move on to the next one. About the fourth watch of the night after nine hours of making no headway. Again, early in the morning. Jesus walked on the water. The water which was, was their source of distress became the path for his feet. Now, here's what happens. Their, free, their fear is amped up. It increases, kind of like coming to church night. Why are we afraid of that? A lot of people are. Kids weren't always willing to admit it, but yeah, I think they would be too, by yourself, right? Because in fronting the divine, that they're terrified. In fact, the word for terrified here is they're tormented. Tormented. It's almost something that happens when a demonic comes upon them. You feel tormented. The wind they could handle, they're fishermen, they knew how to deal with this. The chaotic sea they didn't like, they were fearful. But seeing this aberration, this ghost, this creature, the divine, and knowing who they were. But what does Jesus do? Jesus speaks. Jesus knows, and now he speaks. No hesitation. It says in the text, immediately he spoke to them saying... Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. He doesn't just know. He speaks. When he speaks, something happens. When disciples were fearful, he'll say things like this. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives. Let not your hearts be troubled, let it not be afraid. I go and prepare a place for you. If I wouldn't have done that, I would not have told you. He goes and prepares a place for them. Jesus speaks because he knows we have sin. And he says this, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Isn't that interesting? Even the sins we're not always aware of, he knows and he speaks forgiveness. Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. On the mountain of transfiguration, remember, the disciples saw the three there and then... They fell on their knees, encountering the all-powerful Jesus and what was going on. And he speaks and says to them, he speaks, get up, don't be afraid. We're gathered here because Jesus talks. It's not unknown what he's up to. He actually speaks to us his words. Hear this for yourself. It is I, take heart, do not be afraid. The journey continues, and the troubles, they keep piling up. Yeah, Jesus knows, Jesus speaks, all is well, wonderful, wonderful. Peter says, I am ready to walk to you, Jesus. He walks to Jesus, and then common sense kicks in. 
shoes on water. It doesn't work this way. This is not how we learned it in third and fourth grade science class. It doesn't work this way. And he forgets what Jesus just said. His phrase, do not be afraid. Just saw the feeding of the 20,000. Remember that? And he cries out. Now catch this. He cries out not as a faithless man. Little faith. But not as a faithless man, but as one who had no other options. One with little faith. But what does Jesus do? Hems and haws, makes him deal with it a little bit, learns a lesson. Here's what the text says. Immediately he reached out his hand and it took hold of him. Immediately. And as he was pulling him up, he says, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? He rescues and reminds Peter and us of a phrase that I heard a pastor some years back say that I've always remembered. And there's two sides to this phrase. We're not saved by our perfect faith, but by a perfect Savior. Now, understood correctly, yes, every faith is perfect because we're righteous in that on the one hand. We get that. That's true. It is perfect in that sense. But it's kind of like that man whose young uh, child was wanting to be healed, and he said, Lord, help me believe, uh, uh, help me believe even though I have unbelief. Help me believe even though I have unbelief. Our foundation becomes wobbly when we think and we believe even with Jesus, real Jesus, the Son of God, of all of our failures, and we think that defines us. And the pile of problems in the world around us and in us are piling up. We may think, that that's even too much for him. I don't see him, I don't see how those words are going to do anything with that. But what does Jesus do? Jesus knows, he speaks, and he reaches down and saves those who should know better. Thank goodness. That's what he loves to do. Now at this point in the text, it may seem like Peter's done. Story's done. We've heard the main point. I'm talking. And yet the account moves off of him and turns to those on the boat. But remember who else was on the boat? It was Peter on that boat. For whatever reason, the author doesn't have us talking individually to Peter, but I guess he talked with the whole disciples. What was he doing along with the others? Was he moaning how once again he let temptations of the world get the best of him? How Jesus had admonished him for that, oh, you of little faith? If anyone would know that, it was Peter. No, it says that those on the boat worshiped him saying truly you are the son of god piled up fears piled up troubles in the middle of all of that you're the son of god why could they say this jesus knows jesus speaks Jesus immediately rescues. And with that, we move forward to what the apostles and countless believers who have gone before us, including wondrous Wanda Portel, 95 years of life, now entered her eternal rest this week, spend her life worshiping him and saying, truly you are the Son of God. It's almost as if all of those piled up troubles as real as they are, inward and outward, it's as if they don't have the final say. Isn't that something? Praise the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. At this time, I would invite you to turn in your hymnals to page 272. It's going to be following the rite of confirmation. And I would invite Sidney and Stephen to come forward. We'll stand right in front of the altar here.
right up here. About three weeks ago, you were up here for a little different situation. <laughs> All right. All right, Sydney is, uh, went through the, the confirmation classes and she'll go through the confirmation. Uh, Steve and her husband is joined her with her. He'll be joining this way, transferring from, is it Emmanuel and St. Charles? Emmanuel and St. Charles. So what a joy uh, to have both of you here and joining our congregation. Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ has said to his apostles, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Sydney, you've been baptized and catechized in the Christian faith according to our Lord's bidding. And Jesus says, whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to God of all grace and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Uh, and Stephen, you can join her in this if you like. Do you this day in the presence of God and of this congregation acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? You renounce the devil. You renounce all his works. You renounce all his ways. Now the congregation is going to join in these responses of the creed, join with them in confessing our faith, just as the disciples did in the boat. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Yes, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. Third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And now just for both of you, do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God? Do you confess the doctrine of the evangelical Lutheran church drawn from the scriptures as you've learned to know it from the small catechism to be faithful and true? Do you intend by the word of God to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word and deed, remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? You intend to continue steadfast in this confession in church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it. We rejoice with thankful hearts that you've been baptized and received the teaching of the Lord. You've confessed the faith and absolved of your sins. As you continue to hear the Lord's word and receive his blessed sacrament, he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion in the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. And Sidney, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you new birth of the water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. And it's a tradition here that we give everyone a Bible verse on this confirmation, uh, whether you're doing it as a middle school individual or as an adult. Uh, your verse is from Galatians 2.20. It'll be written on your form that I'll give you in a bit. This is how it goes. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. That's your confirmation verse. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing Sydney to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, enabling her with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that bringing forth the fruits of faith, she may continue steadfast and victorious to the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Go in peace, and peace be with you. I have a few things here for you. This is your certificate here. And then I don't know if I gave you one of these before. Do you guys have one? Okay, so very good. 
Welcome. Congratulations. At this time, the congregation is invited to rise as we sing the offertory while the offering is brought forward. Additional prayers uh, on behalf of David Bequette. He is back in the hospital. We'll continue to pray for him. And also, uh, as you've heard, we're thankful for Wanda Portell and her life of faith. And for her family, we pray, as they grieve her earthly death. Let us pray. <clears throat> Help us, O Lord, to trust in you at all times. Father, that we may not doubt or fear. Grant us confidence in all that you have promised to bestow daily and richly upon your people. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, you supported Peter in his doubts and fears. <clears throat> Keep us from sinking, sinking into despair when we suffer the trials of this mortal life, when our troubles pile on. Be with especially those who are in need. Uh, we pray for Aaron Ritter, Gerald Brink, Gary Crawford, Steve Tulin, John Garfield, Steve Volkert, Carl Maschmeyer, Chris Martin, Allison Ford, Barb Schneider, Rex Hancock, David Bequette, Peggy Shute, uh, Mary Schmidt, Bob Coates, Kathy Cooner, Pat Marshall, and Sean Malone. Grant them your healing, hope, faith, and strength, all according to your good and gracious will. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> we thank you for the life of Wanda Portell, and especially for bringing her and keeping her in the one true faith. Give to the grieving family and friends the peace and hope that come from the living Savior. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> Gracious Lord, we thank you for bringing Sidney and Stephen Twillman into our fellowship here at St. Paul's. Feed them with your gracious word in this place and help them to be a blessing to us and we to them. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> oh Lord, we pray for the family of Margaret Conrad as they grieve her recent death. Assure them of your presence and give them the hope that through Jesus they have an everlasting reunion with her in heaven. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> Guide and direct all teachers and students, especially those going in the Columbia community as they return to school. We also pray for those who are heading off to college. Uh, and, um, guide them as they begin a new year at school. And we also pray for Unity Lutheran School in East St. Louis, a mission of our congregation. Bless and guide also the work of Sam and Kendall Davis as they continue to seek support for Sam's mission work. Lord, in your mercy. Grant that we who come to the, your table may receive Christ's body and blood in faith. Grant us to truly be united in confession, even as we are one at the table of our Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, <clears throat> who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. 
Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. By faith the saints of old held fast to the promise of things hoped for, though not yet seen, leaving an example and encouragement for us who walk now by faith and not by sight. Grant that we may faithfully eat and drink this holy supper of your Son's body and blood, and in the union of this mystical body, the Church, be joined in unending praise with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Elijah, Peter, and all the prophets, blessed apostles and evangelists, the holy martyrs and all the saints in glory who have fought the good fight of faith before us. Amen. You may be seated. This body and blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who says, It is I, do not be afraid, may to strengthen you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Go in his peace and joy. Thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith towards you and fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Be the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Please be seated for closing him. <laughs> 